Welcome to another edition of the podcast known as Blending the Family. I am your host, Tommy Maloney, coming to you from the hotel room in beautiful, warm, sunny, gorgeous, mountainous Glenwood Springs, Colorado. And here for the, uh, I'm trying to think of a different, I'm trying to think of a, um, we'll go with Silent Partner. I, uh, been an introvert this whole week, didn't explore, uh, the town of Glenwood Springs until today, went out to grab some lunch and go, Ooh, <laughs> I could have walked down here. I could have explored. I could have, uh, gone to some new restaurants, but that's okay. I want to, uh, do those things with my wife and her and I had this discussion. She goes, oh, you can check out places. And then I'm like, I don't like doing that. I'd rather do it with you. I hope that makes sense. How are you doing? You doing good? I'm like, gosh, I'm so excited about this episode because not only am I recording this on the new MacBook Pro laptop with the new M1 chip. Yes, plug. I'm plugging my MacBook Pro, my Apple MacBook Pro. I love this. I'm, you know, at first I didn't like it because it was smaller than my other laptop, but I'm really enjoying it. I have not had the opportunity yet to uh, be on a plane with it to, you know, bust it out and start typing, but it's it's nice. It's, like I said, smaller, obviously lighter. Uh, my older uh, MacBook Pro had a built-in CD, DVD, player which I really do miss but I will survive I will survive I'm not going to break out in song but I am going to break in some water very dry up here Mm. Ah, that was good good water good water by the way anybody listening that's uh that works with arrowhead I love your water I love your bottled water that and deja blue those are I think um, there's one more. I can't think of it. Oh, it's one of those bottled waters that has the alkaline. Anyway, uh, Arrowhead, Deja Blue, two of my favorite bottled waters. Are you doing good? I I know, I'm rambling. I'm, again, excited. I get to record again. I get to travel and bring the podcast mic with me. I am just, oh. And again, I'm excited about this episode. Um... This John Francis, John Francis, if that name sounds familiar, John Francis was actually on, where's my other notes? Oh, shoot, I lost my notes. Johnny Francis. I want to say episode 158. I want to say that. And I don't know how I lost, there it is. Yes. No, 154. Episode 154, John Francis, the founder, creator of Father's Eve and Father's Eve 2021 is back better than ever. I'm just saying that. And I want to give a a challenge. I want to give a challenge to you. Let me pull up. I just, I had the website up and now I don't have the website. If I go to my Google, was it still there? Yes. All right, so Father's Eve, save the date, June 19th, 2021, uh, anywhere 8 p.m. Uh, go to fathersEve.com, fathersEve.com uh, to get the information. But I am throwing a personal challenge out there. Gosh darn it, I had it. Okay, let's go to Father's Eve, fathersEve.com. All right. Uh, what was I looking at? Oh, I was looking at Take Part. I think that was it. Host an event. Oh, where was it? 2021 events. Here we go. 2021 events. All right. I'm looking at the, the cities in the United States. So the, the, the main event is going to be in Roseville, Minnesota. Okay, Roseville, Minnesota. That's where uh, John Francis is. But I see Arizona, Ohio, Michigan, North Carolina, Tennessee, Michigan. Again, 
uh, Glen Arbor, Michigan, and Detroit, Harlem, New York, uh, Kittery, Maine, Long Island, New York, uh, Mexico City. Oh my God, that's awesome. Uh, Minneapolis, Minnesota, Phoenix, Arizona, Portland, Oregon, twice, Princeton, Junction, New Jersey, Tarpon Springs, Florida. I'm probably screwing up that, but here's the thing. I don't see Colorado. I'm going to say that's probably, I'll take a fall for that. I don't see Illinois, my home state, Illinois. Come on. Come on. I don't even see California. People. Come on. Fans. Fans. Family of Illinois. Let's go. Create your own Father's Eve event. Go to the website, fathersEve.com, and then uh, click on the link um, to host your own event. Um, oh, gosh. So my buddy Chris Williams and I are going to try and do something. We're going to try and do something. All right. John Francis on this episode, and he does give a, a backstory of Father's Eve, but also he dropped dropped um, some special announcements about the Father's Eve as far as special guests go. So please, fathersEve.com, check it out. Um, great conversation, great conversation. Uh, some of the things we talked about, um, teaching your kids about riding a bike. Um, I have a story about that. Talking about bringing more men, more men, more women to help promote Father's Eve. We do talk about, one thing we do talk about is, I'm, I'm on the cusp on this. I, I feel that as men, we're starting, we're finally starting to uh, admit when we need help. And we have, a, we have a good conversation about that. Sponsors. Oh, did I mention? I don't think I mentioned this. Uh, Children's Miracle Network, Ace Hardware, Sports Clips. So excited. These are some major, major sponsors for um, Father's Eve 2021. So there you go. I'm trying to think. What else? I, mean, I know it's been a while. Just launched the new uh, Mental Health Monday. That's going well. And what else? Oh, um the boy graduated high school and that was rough i didn't cry i thought i would cry more or cry period i didn't cry um the end of june he and i are going to go visit the college he's going to be attending excited about that then we're going to spend a few days in chicago chicago that title and ta- going to have some chicago pizza I am going to say my all-time favorite pizza place in Chicago. Are you ready for this? It's called Chicago Pizza and Oven Grinder. Chicago Pizza and Oven Grinder. It's in the Lincoln Park area. I just It's been a while since we've been there, so hopefully the food is still I I always loved it, so we'll see. Um, the boy and I will be stopping there. We'll also be hitting the Chicago Blackhawk store. Come on. Got to. Got to. And spending quality time with um, my dad, the boy's grandfather. And, yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited about uh, um, Connor um, taking this trip, this uh Adventure to visit the college he'll be going to in the fall. It's going to be rough. I would love to hear. Please email me, Tommy at blendingthefamily.com. Tommy at blendingthefamily.com. How did you handle when your kids went away to college? Especially if they went far away. Far away. I mean, he's going to be far away. I'm not talking uh, east or west coast. I'm talking. Um, Midwest, but uh, bloody cold. <laughs> He's going to be freezing, but he gets to play hockey. So that is super cool. 
And yeah, our girls are doing well. I'm just, I'm just, it, it's a good time, but it's also going to be a sad time with uh, Connor being the last to go to college. Um, yeah, it's, it's, I mean, technically, I guess we're empty nesters, but we, we've, uh, my wife Ann and I have are somewhat been empty nesters uh, even before COVID started. Uh, Connor was already working three jobs, so we barely ever saw him anyway. So, so we're going to see less of him when he goes away. And I would love to, I need your take. I would love to hear how you handle it, okay? All right, there we go. I think I've said way too much. I know I have, and I apologize. John Francis the founder of Father's Eve. Please, please go to fathersEve.com. It could be two dads. Just start something. And I'm going to, I made a promise to John that we're going to put uh, Colorado on the map. And I want Chicago or or Illinois, I should rephrase that. Illinois, I want Illinois on the map. I want California on the map and Colorado on the map. Okay? Alaska, Hawaii, oh. um, the UK, Ireland. I can keep going on and on. All right. Uh, don't forget, please go to uh, mydadsadvicebook.com. Mydadsadvicebook.com. We're getting closer and closer for that to uh, phys- physically come out. My new book, um, My Dad's Advice at 5.04 AM, based on my TEDx talk, go to uh, YouTube. I know I'm still working on the website. Gosh darn it, I'm still working on the website. Anyway, go to YouTube, My Dad's Advice at 5.04 AM. You can see the um, the TEDx talk there. Mention the book, mention fathersEve.com. And uh, that's it. That's all I'm going to say because my goal is to get this up. Uh, before midnight tonight because I want to get some sleep. There you go. All right. Thanks for listening. Thanks for uh, listening to me ramble these past 12 minutes and 28 seconds, 29 seconds, 30 seconds before I go. As Terry Crews would say, your success is my success. Please, please support Father's Eve. Hashtag Father's Eve. Life is good. Um, yeah, I really have no complaints. Yeah, same. Uh, we're good over here. Kids are getting vaccine. My kids are graduating. One's a high school graduate this year, senior. One's an eighth grade graduate, middle school. Grad. Wow. It just happened yesterday. So we got, we're kind of double duty on the graduations, but, um, uh, congratulations. Everyone's behaving themselves. Yeah. So far, so good. No real drama, just a fair amount of anxiety and stress. <laughs> <laughs> overly obnoxious you know it's normal i i know the feeling yeah. i know the feeling yes yeah and then father's eve of course is ramping up so i'm going crazy trying to you know pull it all together but you know we, what we really learn that a lot of advanced marketing really doesn't matter for father's eve because guys don't plan they just don't <laughs> they just don't nobody's thinking about right father's Day right now nobody no, no, no. Maybe some clever marketing deal is putting out hey, Father's Day, early Father's Day gift idea, you know, and it's two weeks away. But guys don't care. So we, we start really pushing it next week and then the week of, and we're looking forward to it, man. But it's, well, it's, it's crunch time right now, you know. Well, it's funny you say that. Just, I think it was last weekend, I said to my wife, I was on uh, Amazon going, Hey, any ideas what uh, your dad wants for Father's Day? And she's like, no idea. And then she goes, what about your dad? I go, the same, no idea. Yeah, eh, they'll be this weekend. Welcome maybe. to real life, right? I mean, that's yeah. just it. It's um, I think uh, it's kind of sad but true. I guess you know, I'm not going to cry about it, but uh, I think that. Uh, Father's Eve could become that thing that you didn't have that you know you want. You know what I mean? Like, it could become that, like, yeah, I want that. And, and whatever Father's Eve is, yeah, it can be kind of, I mean, I'm, 
you know, I'm getting creative, I guess, but I'm thinking it could be more than, than it has been or more than it, people think of it. I mean, think about it. guys getting together with really no agenda. You know, we're not selling anything. We're not buying anything. We're not preaching to anyone. We're not solving anybody's problems. You know, we're sharing ideas. Sure. We're telling stories. Of course, we're having a good time. Absolutely. But it's nothing to do. I mean, I think that's the magic is there's just the goal is there's no expectation. You just show up, you know, and judgment free environment. You know, that to me is valuable. And I don't think guys get that anywhere else. I mean, where do you go? You know, it's like we have a thing in, in my neighborhood. One of my buddies is a crazy nut with the real estate. Right. He wound up with this garage like it's a. It's an old garage, but it's big enough, but it's not too big. And anyway, he, he put a bar in it, and it's turned into like a hideout, like a treehouse. <laughs> we call it the Men's Crisis Center, right, as a joke, because, you know, and and it's, it's you know, it's not like rough, but like there's no plumbing, you know, but he put in lighting and heat, and, and we hang out in there and just open the garage door and just hang out, right? And it's fun. And it's nobody's home, you know, so you don't feel like, you're, you can stay as long as you want. There's a keypad on the door, you know, we'll turn the lock when you're done. Anyway, it's um, that's what we need more of, I think. And that's what, to me, Father's Eve can create that judgment-free, kind of just hang out, relax, do whatever you want. Nobody cares. Father's Eve. Well, do you think that because of COVID, we lost some of that? Yeah, we lost momentum you know, in 2019, we had 60 cities and we were going gangbusters for 2020. I, I had restaurant relationships lined up with brands that were going to do a Father's Eve special, like a beer and a burger kind of combo or basket and wings and Father's Eve promotional stuff, which would be really cool, right? Bring the dads in with a good deal, a burger and a beer, right? And it's Father's Eve. And and anyway, all that stopped because COVID hit and, you know, everything stopped. And by the time June rolled around, we were in full lockdown. I mean, so we couldn't do anything. The lawyer is like, don't tell people not to do it. If they do it anyway, and someone gets sick and it's, oh, I got it at Father's Eve. You know, you don't want that. So we did a live event from my garage last summer. You know, I could have 10 people. That was the limit with the masks and all that. Right. And um, we had a great time, you know, but uh, <laughs> we did a live stream. Like I said, it was like Dick Clark on Times Square. You know, when I was a kid, you'd watch the Dick Clark on TV and he'd do it every hour. He'd do it over again, you know, because the time zone thing. So we did that from my garage. We did it at, at uh, seven o'clock, which is eight o'clock Eastern. We counted down for the East Coast guys and we did that live. And then we had this recorded kind of pre-recorded videos and clips and stuff from our partners and sponsors and messages of encouragement and, you know, a streaming uh, program, I guess. And then we'd, we'd cut back to live for the next hour, you know, for five minutes. We'd say, hey, everybody grab a beer. You know, we're going to do it again. And we'd all go crazy and count it down. And then we'd go back to the program and then we'd cut back live again. We did it four times, you know, and, <laughs> and every time zone, it got a little progressively a little later, obviously, and, and a little sloppier, I would say. We got a little <laughs> carried away because it's Father's Eve. And, and the producer, this woman who was helping us with the, the technology, she's like, you know, what are you guys half asleep? She said, crank it up over there. Let's see some enthusiasm. I'm like, oh, well, all right. You know, it's still light out. It's summer, you know. And anyway, we got after it and had a great time. We made the most of it and, and we had a good time. We, we had uh, – 7,000 viewers on that. Stream. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Which was more than we expected. And, and, um, but we're happy with that. We thought, well, you know, guys want to connect. So this year, 21, obviously COVID is goodbye. You know, and at first we were thinking, well, let's tell some COVID stories, you know, about a month ago. I'm like, you know, everyone's done with COVID, man. I don't want to talk about it. I agree. I, totally. I don't agree. want anything to do it. You know, we're, we're all tired of all that. So, we're having hybrid events. So in person, like in real life, we're doing a big one here in, in Roseville, Minnesota. Kind of the main event is up at a brewery. And we got some new sponsors on a local level. You know, we've, we've been working hard to pull it together. 
we've got Children's Miracle Network Hospital is our national charity partner. So we're going to raise money for them and with them nationally. And that has some real potential because not only is it a good group, I mean, they're big and, and uh, capable, but we think the tie-in is, you know, dads take care of their kids, right? Fathers and fatherhood and Father's Eve is about celebrating fatherhood. So we, we want to take care of our kids. We want to take care of all the kids. If you see a kid nearby, you know, and you're a dad, you're going to do what you can to help those kids. We, we want to help other kids too. So anyway, we think the tie-in with Children's Miracle Hospital, uh, Children's Miracle Network Hospitals, they have 170 hospitals. Tommy, they're, they're all over the place, right? These are big hospitals with lots of people and and they do great things for those kids, their patients and the families that are stuck there. Yeah, anyway, so we're raising money for them and uh, they can do some good with us and, and they've got uh, some you know ideas and we're, tr- we're trying to figure it out. And then with their help, we, we pulled in Ace Hardware and Ace Hardware is a big national brand and they're a partner already of Children's Miracle Network. And they said, well, you know, we, uh, they want to focus on dads, of course. When I, I go to Ace Hardware. One of the Ace franchisees here in Minneapolis is a good friend of mine. And uh, so we got a hold of him and we kind of talked it up and, and uh, thought, well, you know, we could do this. It could be a great example where, you know, Ace Hardware is like the sponsor uh, of an event called Father's Eve, which is a fundraiser for Children's Miracle Network. And, you know, everybody wins. Right. That's kind of how my brain thinks. Try to try to create an opportunity where everybody can benefit and win and help each other and really create something more fun and more more interesting right, for everybody. And and uh, anyway, so that's what we're doing in Minneapolis. Then we've been shaking the trees and beating the bushes and trying to get guys to come back from last year, from two years ago. And then we got a few more. I got I got I think I got two or three today. I'm, I've been, uh, you know, following up on phone calls and. And the mo- the promotion really starts like next week. You know, we like I said before, we've learned you really don't need to promote it in advance. It's it's a waste of time until it's like a, a ten weekday, a ten or ten or a week or ten days away from the event. I mean, up until you know the weekend before, nobody's thinking about it. And then, so we hit it hard right before the event, and then people are like, "Oh yeah, Father's Eve, let's go." And it's a last minute kind of thing, which is fine. I mean, that's, that's how it is. It's guys. We get it, right? So yeah. Oh, yeah. We're going to have some fun. We're going to do our thing. We've got, I think we'll have, I'm guessing we'll have probably 30 or 40 events around the country this year, live in person in bars and restaurants and backyards and garages and, and breweries. And I heard of a deal uh, today down in Kansas City. They're doing an outdoor movie screening. And oh, very cool. And it's like there's a fatherhood movie coming out, which is really cool. And there's some fatherhood books coming out. There's, there's a lot of good stuff, good stuff coming. And this year, um, I'll spill the beans. I'll give you a scoop here, Tommy. You're the first <laughs> one to know public, ooh, ooh. public information is that we have a, a special guest speaker on our live stream program, which will be online at fathersEve.com is Craig Melvin from the Today Show. Oh, wow. Craig Melvin is a co-host of the Today Show on NBC, and he's got a new book on fatherhood that's coming out. And this could be a plug for, for this post, if you can get this up before it, and uh, tag him and, and to the Today Show, because I'm sure NBC is looking for it. Um, he's got an interesting story. Uh, he, he's an African-American gentleman and married to a, a white lady, uh, his wife, of course, and they've got children. And and they've had their challenges, right? And, and um, anyway, I, I don't want to tell too much, but the book is coming out, and he's he's promoting his book, and he's going to share it with us on Father's Eve, some some background and uh, an interview that he's recording, and we're going to use that. And we think it's a great opportunity uh, to help get the word out, and and he's a good spokesman and a great guy, and we think that'll help uh, help everyone again, kind of share what we can and and help each other get more out of it. So. So that's exciting news. And we've got a couple other speakers, uh, a woman named uh, Tonya. She is from Ohio. She is a fantastic speaker. And she's got a very powerful message about what's it like growing up without a father and uh, what she missed and what she's learned and now what she's doing to help other people recognize how important fatherhood is. She's She's got a mission and 
She's great, uh, Tonya Lee Carey. Uh, then we've got an NFL Super Bowl champion, a guy named Ben Utek, who uh, lives here in Twin Cities, where I am. And we crossed paths and started talking about stuff. And he's a, he's a big advocate for fatherhood and, and leadership and doing the right thing. And, and uh, we think he's got a great message to share on Father's Day. So we're going to have multiple speakers this year. We've got the same partners coming back. Uh, and then the sponsor, uh, Sport Clips, is our national sponsor. We love those guys. They do a great job. Get a haircut at Sport Clips. Uh, so we're, <laughs> we're working our, our system, you know. And, and it's a it's a passion project. I mean, we're all volunteers. You know, if anyone's paying for it, I am. And, and uh, you know, I got to stay happy at home, right? Keep my family and wife and we're um so it's a it's a balanced thing but right now it's it's a it's a crunch time but it's a lot of fun because i'm meeting so many new interesting people all over the country um they're learning and hearing about father's eve everyone's excited about it i, I think people are so pent up and ready to get out and get back together in person for a good reason and father's eve is is just that you know it's a uh, it's a new opportunity and uh so well, let's take great. a step back. Let's take a step back, sure. John, because you have such great information. And I'm looking at the notes from the last time and the first time you were on. So that was episode 154. And some of the notes I have is that Father's Eve started in 2012 by an accident. Yeah. Those are my notes. Yeah. True, right? True. Yes. <laughs> it was an accident. It you want me to tell the story, or yeah, I mean, it, because I, I want to give <laughs> I want to give our listeners a little bit of foundation because oh, sure the the great thing is that even though a, a pandemic happened, you kept going, Father's Eve kept going, yeah. but let's talk about the origins and let's talk about you know how how this all started by accident. Sure. Well, it, it, it was an accident, but you know, I'm, I, I guess I'm a believer or I'm faithful. You know, there are no accidents, right? What we think is an accident really. Of course. I agree. You know, I totally agree with you, John. There's no such thing, but uh, so we, we, uh, no such thing as an accident. I mean, no, you know, no coincidence and hard work, right? And the harder I work, the luckier I get. And anyway, so my life, I'm a lucky kid. I'll just start there, okay? I grew up the youngest of five kids. My dad was a businessman, an owner, an entrepreneur, a barber who franchised barbershops and got involved in all kinds of businesses and real estate. I got to do all kinds of stuff, and I grew up in a family business or two or three. I mean, we had a lot going on at home, and I was the youngest of five, so by the time I grew up, you know, it was, it wasn't like the startup phase, you know, things were already kind of going and there was a lot to do. And, and, uh, it was a great environment for, uh, for me. Anyway, I, I felt lucky to be the youngest kid. Uh, long story short, my father passed away from cancer when I was 26 and he had had a long battle with cancer. He had 15 years. He had 22 surgeries for wow. cancer, right? And this was in the, 80s when it was diagnosed and he died in 94 so it was a i will say it had a tremendous impact on our my childhood right by the time he had died most of my life he was sick and going in and out of the hospital like uh, uh you know it was a, a roller coaster let's just say it was traumatic and stressful and and created a lot of a lot of things, but he passed away and I was lucky to have him as a dad. I'm, I'm grateful for my childhood and my father was a great role model for me, really, at a lot of levels. Then, unfortunately, uh, we just kind of get over that. Uh, my mom and my sisters, I got three sisters and, and my brother. And then my brother, my older brother, Joe, who's 10 years older, dies in a car accident three years later. You're not even so like. I'm 29 and he was 39 and he dies like, and it was a pretty awful time. He was going through a divorce and all kinds of problems going on. And, and we were just coming out of the loss of my dad, right? We're getting things back on track. And so it was like a double whammy. So I lost my dad and I lost my brother. So, you know, I mean, honestly, I didn't know, you know, what to do, right? I mean, life goes on and work goes on and, and the business went on and we wound up selling the business like our family business, our main 
main business, which was unexpected. <clears throat> anyway, now I finally get married, right? I had delayed things because, you know, I had suffered some uh, trauma, let's just say, with those, those things going on in my life. And anyway, I finally get married, find a fabulous wife. She's fantastic, Janelle. Everyone who's ever met her knows that I'm just the luckiest guy. I mean, there's like no way. How did you do that? <laughs> She's great, and uh, we're blessed. And and so we start ha- trying to have kids, and um, we, we you know it was tough. We we weren't able to do what we thought we could do, and so we're at the doctors, and we're going through all this fertility. You know, it took a while, and uh, and we were lucky again. We're blessed. And we could do some things, and and we had two lovely daughters, uh, Lily, who uh, was born in uh, let's see, two thousand seven, and then Anna. Her little sister was born in uh, 2013. Is that right? I don't know if I got those dates right. Anyway, uh, Lily is just now a senior in high school, and Anna is just an eighth grader heading into high school. So two lovely daughters. Anyway, by the time my kids were around, and I'm a late late bloomer father, so I had Lily when I was 36 years old, and I had Anna when I was 40. Right, my wife and I had the babies, of course, just just together. And uh, well, te- well, technically, your wife had the babies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I was all over it, and, and I knew I wanted to be a dad. We were so excited, you know. It was it was very much a on purpose kind of thing. And uh, anyway, now I'm a dad, and and the two role models that I would normally lean on, my dad and my brother, are gone. Right, they're gone, and they've been gone for a while. So I really leaned on uh, my in-laws. I got a great brother-in-law uh, who's married, my sister, and they got kids, and my, my father-in-law and uh, other in-laws. I've got, I mean, I got some great family. I got some great friends, right? My brother's friends who are my friends, my own friends from school and college and high school and work. And yeah, I got friends. I'm, I'm a connector. People who know me, you know, I know a lot of people and I have a lot of fun. And, and so I leaned on the people around me like, Hey, how do you do it with your kids? You know, what do you, what am I doing about this? What are you supposed to do about, you know, one of my best friends has two daughters and they're a little bit older than my girls. So this was great because he would tell me what's going on. It was like a preview, right. To what I was going to see. It was, it was ideal. So I leaned on my friends and that's how I learned, I guess, to be a better dad and, you know, try to figure it out just like anybody, you know, nothing special, just doing my part, right? Trying to be an on-purpose dad. So again, long story short, uh, opportunity comes along. Uh, when the recession came through in 2009 and 10, back in that era, and business went crazy and, you know, it was pretty awful for a lot of businesses, but we saw an opportunity to move. Um, cause a lot of the big houses here in, in the twin cities were on sale. Like it was a real recession I mean, values were dropping. So we, we looked around and, and took our time, my wife and I, and I wanted a different house. I wanted a bigger house, a bigger garage is really what I wanted. So we moved, found a nice house, but the garage was terrible. So we moved in 2011 and I had the garage, con- you know, contractor put up a real garage, a nice he tore down this old crappy little thing and I put up a really nice big garage with more <laughs> drains and, you know, the whole thing, everything I wanted, right? I could put all my stuff in one place. Well, the garage is finally finished and I want to throw a party to show it off to my friends. Like, come on over and see my new place. Here's where we moved. You know, here's the garage. Come on over. And my wife and I were flipping through calendars back when you flipped calendars, like it was a what you call a pay a week at a glance, right? You're flipping pages, and I'm flipping pages, looking through the calendar, like looking for a Friday or Saturday night. I want to have some buddies over, and you know we're gonna christen the garage. And she's like, "Well, all right, you know, you stay in the garage and whatever." So we're going through the calendar and couldn't find an open date. Everything was busy, you know. The kids were little, and and we had a lot going on. It was a busy summer, and I'm like, damn, we keep flipping the calendar. And, the only night that was open was that Saturday in June. And so I turned the calendar page and the next day's Father's Day. And I said, well, that's the only night. And, and it was like, yeah, the next one was in like September. I mean, it was crazy. I said, well, if that's the night and it's the night before, then that makes it Father's Eve. I'm going to call it Father's Eve. And 
I invited about 25 buddies over like, hey, who's available? Come on over. We're going to, you know, I got a new garage. Here's my new place, you know, and it was nothing. I mean, it was literally nothing. I had, a, I think we, we said we had a cooler full of beer and two bags of chips and that was it, you know, and we moved the cars out into the, out of the garage and we turned the music up just a little too loud and, and we had a great time, <laughs> you know, it was perfect. Just me and a bunch of guys hanging out, nothing to it. Everybody had a ball and, um, you know, it grew. Then they're like, well, let's do it again. So the next year, of course, it had to be Father's Eve. So about twice as many guys showed up and uh, we had, now we got kegs of beer and, and, you know, people were bringing bottles of stuff and we had some games and the one guy brought cigars, you know, we were hanging out and just chilling, chilling, just guys, nothing. It was great. So we did it again, right? The third year now we got organized. I had some buddies that are in the car clubs, right? Some cool, you know, old cars and stuff, convertibles. And so they drove out where we had like a car show going down the street. We had uh, one of my buddies is in the restaurant. He set up this giant grill in my driveway and we're grilling and all kinds of food going. And we had drinks and we had games. We had rented these like arcade games and putting greens and stuff. I and mean, we, we now are going big time. We took, we had a bags tournament where you throw the cornhole bags, you know, back. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know, and there was a, like guys I didn't know, like friends were bringing their friends. I'm like, this is great, right? This is a party. I mean, Father's Eve. And it's like, yeah, Father's Eve. So then someone challenged me that year and said, you know, what are you going to do with this Father's Eve? Like you could do some good with this. And, you know, my first reaction was like, you know, what's wrong with this? This is, you know. This is fun. They said, no, you could really do some good. Why don't you do some good? You know, it was someone who knew me and kind of challenged me. I'm like, oh, man, okay, well. So we talked about it that that fall. You know, these guys are my hunting and fishing and snowmobiling buddies, right? I'm like, well, if we're going to do something, you know, like, quote, do something, I'm not doing it alone. I said, you guys are going to have to help me. There's no way. I don't want to, you know, come on. And they said, well, we'll make it a charity thing. Let's make it a fundraiser. And let's move it out of your garage. Let's move it up to a bar. There was a bar nearby. A friend of mine is a friend of the owners. And they gave us the back room and it worked out perfectly. So 2015 was the first real, you know, what I would say, organized Father's Eve. We printed T-shirts. We sold tickets. We made it a fundraiser. And we split $10,000 that we raised. We split it between two charities. We couldn't believe it. We got some media. One of my buddies from college is in the PR business and he got us on the television and in the newspaper. And so we had some fun, man. It was really fun. I called in all my favors, all the people who, who kind of owed me favors. I'm like, look, either give me something to put in the auction because it was a fundraiser. I said, or come up here and buy something and spend a little too much, you know, because we're raising money. And, uh, and we had a great time. It was great. So we did it again. And that's when I knew I had 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 something. We licensed it. We, we trademarked it and licensed it. And then we gave it away for free. So 20, 2015 was the first kind of big organized one in St. Paul, Minnesota. 2016, I think we were in uh, about 12 cities, right? Friends of mine, mostly just guys I knew, and said, uh, you know, okay, I need you to throw a party on this Saturday in June and, and call it Father's Eve. It's going to be great. And so a few guys did it. Then we hooked up with the groups, these fatherhood groups called um, City Dads Group and the National At Home Dad Network. And I started uh, attending this conference called Dad 2.0, which is right, a marketing right. thing for, you know, influencers. I'm like, what's that? You know, I, I really had no real business being there. I don't, didn't have a blog. I didn't know anything about social media. I mean, I've learned a lot, obviously. Uh, a few things anyway. And so I kept showing up there. I just show up, man. I, I, I Half of it is just being there. I put my shirt on and, and have a business card. And I'm not afraid to talk and ask questions and try to help somebody and say, well, here's what I got, you know, can, does this work for you? And, and uh, so making friends and, and making connections and then it grew and grew and grew. And, and like I said, in 2019, we had 60 cities and three countries. Uh, we had one in Mexico, a couple up in Canada, uh, we've had one in Costa Rica. We had a guy over in the UK. Uh, I think it was someone in Scotland in Edinburgh one year. I mean, we've we've had some random 
you know, uh, interest that, and it's it, because it's, there's nothing to it. I think that's what makes it so interesting. You know, it's like, people are like, well, what's the catch? I'm like, there is no catch. I mean, it, we invented a holiday kind of by accident, but you know, I think it's, I mean, I I've learned now over the years. I mean, there's, there's some real value here because guys don't, guys don't ask for help and guys don't stay connected. You know, they need to stay connected. They need to have friends and they need to do things with those friends that isn't around work and, uh, you know, isn't around their kids. I mean, or, or something else, you know, they need some, some new ideas and some fresh perspective. And so when Father's Eve, you know, when it starts to kind of take its own shape and the idea for me really is to just get it big enough to scale where it hits a tipping point and just takes off and it just happens, right? It's just a natural, Hey, where are you going to go for Father's Eve? Oh yeah, that's coming up. Yeah, I think I'm going here. I'm going there. I'm having buddies at my house, or we'll all go to your house, or you know, it's like New Year's Eve. Like, well, what are you going to do for New Year's? Well, we're staying in. We're going to take it easy. Oh, okay. Father's Eve, we're going to be online. We've got a live stream, you know, video thing on the on the internet, a virtual event. Or if you're going to be go somewhere to a bar or restaurant or someone's house or garage or backyard, you know, it's in person. It's the same idea. The biggest difference, you probably know, uh, New Year's Eve, you got to wait till midnight to do your countdown toast, right? We count it down. On Father's Eve, we back that up to eight o'clock local time because I got to go home. I got to get to bed. I, I got to wake up tomorrow. It's Father's Day. So and you don't you don't want to be too hungover. No, for Father's not Day a bit. I want to I want to have Father's Day as for dads and families, right? I want to be with my kids, and maybe we we go to the cemetery visit my dad and my brother. And, you know, you want to do some things with your family on Father's Day. So Father's Day is for families, and uh, we don't want to we don't want to uh, take anything away from Father's Day. We love Father's Day, and but I wanted to have some more, so we added Father's Eve the night before just for the dads. Well, I do want to give a couple of shout outs because you did mention uh, City Dads Group, uh, which was started uh, or co-founded by Matt Schneider, who's been on this podcast. A yeah. uh, good friend of ours, James Lopez. Um, yeah. He's just a great guy. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's, it's nice to hear, John, about positive fatherhood because i feel that it's finally you know we're 2021 and i feel that we're finally getting to a point where we we have more positive fatherhood we have yeah. uh, events like father's eve and we have you know the city dads group which if you're listening to this podcast there are city dad groups all over the country mm-hmm. all over the mm-hmm. country yeah and the the other thing that I find fascinating when you're given the rundown about this year's event, you have a female speaker. So how are you getting more women and moms uh, able to spread the word about Father's Eve? Well, that's a good question, Tommy. There's there are mom groups out there, of course, and uh, I even went to the Mom 2.0 conference, which was mm-hmm. like. A mind blower for me. I got to tell you, I had no idea what what to expect, but it was great. They're great. They're well organized, very professional, uh, and those ladies are smart. I mean, let me tell you, they're they're more organized and and uh, willing to to uh, do things together. I, I think the guys are, you know, it's just a different attitude. That's just like anything, I guess. But the moms, you know, uh, people have said, well, what about Mother's Eve? I'm like, you know, I. I I got enough going on. You know, I think moms can do with that if they want. I'm all for it. We love moms. I mean, you know, I'm, I'm married, uh, my wife, I got two daughters, three sisters and my own mom. So I'm surrounded by women, but we haven't really had any, I would say organized outreach with the motherhood channels or motherhood uh, media if, or influencers in that sense. Not that we're, we're, we're certainly open to it. It's, guess we just haven't found a connection that makes sense you know i think i think the uh, there's been a few i've had a few conversations i'm thinking of over the years of different groups and different sort of influencers and people who are interested and, and willing to share ideas but you know i think everybody is still just kind of trying to do their own thing and, and uh, i don't see a lot of uh you know i think our problem is we're one night a year 
right? And so it's it's hyper seasonal. Father's Eve is obviously one night a year. I don't really want to try to stay relevant all year. I mean, there are things we could do and there's there's approaches we could take, but really I I don't have that kind of horsepower or ambition, I guess, at least not at this level. You know, we're just trying to keep it going and get it going and every year kind of make it resurge and kind of come back and do it again. And so keeping it relevant all year is is a different kind of challenge. And so I think maybe because of that, Father's Eve being such a like hyper seasonal thing, you know, other groups aren't really interested in what we're doing until until that season comes around again. And so that makes it really I guess it's a challenge. It's a reality and it's a challenge. And that'll probably change over time. I guess, I don't know. I'm, I'm an optimist that there's a, there's just opportunity everywhere you go. You just have to try to focus on what you can actually execute. You know, ideas are easy. Execution is the hard part. And, um, you know, we're finding that out all the time. <laughs> so what, what is your vision for Father's Eve? I think that- is it, is it, is it going to be going into you know, the card shop and finding yeah. Yeah. Father's Eve cards? Sure, someday. Uh, I actually had a conversation with a, a person who works at Hallmark Cards. Uh, a friend of my friend and through a franchise business had a, his wife or somebody knew somebody worked over there. Anyway, I got to the person and I had the conversation like, I've got this. What do you think? And it was funny because they were very nice and they said, well, you know, it's a cute idea, but, you know, really, we're not. We're not interested yet. She said, call me back when you have 100,000 people involved, like followers or, or event people or, you know, call me back later when your deal is, you know, a lot bigger. They want to sell greeting cards. I mean, guys don't buy a lot of greeting cards. That's the first flaw. And if Father's Eve is is uh, guys supporting other guys, the, the, the likelihood of a dad buying another dad a, a greeting <laughs> card is really pretty slim. So probably slim to none. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, so we're like, well, whatever. But my attitude, my vision, your question was, what's my vision? My, my vision is this becomes like a regular kind of unofficial, quote, holiday. You know, like New Year's Eve is is not the holiday. New Year's Day is a holiday. No matter what day, New Year's Day, the first day of the year is a national holiday. New Year's is actually the only real global holiday that I think, you know, most everybody celebrates uh, all around the world at the same time, which is really cool. Um, Father's Eve, you know, Father's Day, I think it, I, I read up on it and I, and I can't remember exactly. I think it's in like 42 countries have a Father's Day and most of them are like in alignment around the same time, either the same date or close to ours, the third Sunday in June. So so there is some, you know, obviously big potential. Other markets like Australia has a Father's Day, uh, but it's, it's different. It's in September because yeah, they're in the yeah. other hemisphere, right? And I think like big countries like Brazil. I mean, you know, there are, there are big countries with Father's Days that might not be the same day, but it's the same idea, right? Is they they honor dads, or or it's like Men's Day, or, or in 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 some cultures, but. What I'd like to see basically is Father's Eve catches on as a as a easy, fun, and a free, good, positive thing for guys and dads to celebrate fatherhood together. It's not about um, uh, it's not about uh, you know dads are underappreciated. We're not victims. We're not we're not Homer Simpson, right? I mean, I I laugh at Homer, right? But he didn't do the fatherhood image any favors, right? We're not. The dads who are out there doing their part, you know, really do matter. And dads taking care of their family and taking care of their communities and being leaders in their environment and helping the people around them, you know, dads make a big difference. And and I love being a dad, man. It's the most important thing I'll ever do is to raise a couple of capable children and, and have some influence on other kids around me, my nieces and nephews and and other people. And, and, you know, it's it's an opportunity of fatherhood, really. And it's important that we highlight it as that positive opportunity for guys to do good and, and do well and and help others. And that's why making it a fundraiser makes it a lot of fun, you know, makes it more interesting even. I, I think it'll be something that just happens and people are like, they get used to it and they kind of expect it and then they anticipate it. It's like, yeah, oh yeah, Father's Eve. Yeah, what are you going to do? Let's go. <laughs> Maybe it's a day of service. 
Maybe it's a day of uh, volunteering. You know, we've we've had visions of, you know, let's get a dad group like City Dads, right? Here in Minneapolis, we've got about, you know, I don't know, hundreds of members. But if we do an event, you know, you get a few guys to show up. What if we what if we picked a school, for example, I don't know, some playground that needed rehab, needed work, and get Home Depot to sponsor the paint and the paintbrushes, and we go out there and spend a couple hours pulling weeds and, and fixing and painting or, you know, doing some kind of good service dad work, right? Uh, fix something, right? Build something, put it together, make it better. And then when we're done, we turn around and have a barbecue picnic with some grills and some beer and some games and some good, you know, just relaxing time to reward ourselves for doing a good job and, and getting together and learning from each other, doing some good representing fatherhood and then celebrate it. Right. Father's Eve is about celebrating fatherhood and doing it together in a positive way. So I see it as that kind of potential, uh, but it's a long way. You know, these things, nothing's easy. And, and like I said, this started as an accident, which is kind of I'm grateful, really, because my own expectation is, you know, I'm just going to keep plugging away at it. I've got a handful of guys that help me with it. Um, I spend a few dollars here and there to, you know, try to make things happen. But we're, we're trying to keep it authentic kind of a grassroots, uh, genuine uh, effort, you know, and, and a lot of people are volunteers all over the place and, and they're all just kind of want the same thing. It, I think the alignment is, you know, keep it simple, keep it fun, keep it free, right? Father's Eve shouldn't cost you anything. I mean, unless it's a fundraiser and that should be optional, you know, but we're, we're having a good time and uh, I don't see, you know, I think it'll be 20 years from now, it'll be an overnight success. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, before I ask my next question, um, I'm on the website. How come you don't have any baseball hats? You need some baseball yeah, good hats. Good question. John. I'll ask my guy. Um, the guy who does our, our merch, right, is the term I'm learning all this. Uh John Marcraft, we call him Johnny Truth. That's his nickname. He tells the truth. And anyway, he's funny. And I'll tell truth. Where are the baseball caps, man? I, I've got a couple in my closet. You know, we've had them over the years, but uh, yeah, I don't see any baseball. You can get a stupid face mask and a cell phone cover, but you can't. Yeah, I see a baseball that. mask. I mean, or a baseball cap. Yeah, I'll tell him to get on that right away. Well, and I like the beanie. I'm a, I'm a huge fan of the beanie. Um, well, we're in Minnesota. It's cold up here, you know. Well, I live in Colorado. It gets cold here, yeah, too. Oh, yeah. Um, I mean, there's – I mean, you can put some random stuff out there. It's amazing. We use uh, some uh, platform that, you know, I'm not sure exactly, but, it like, you can get anything if you want your logo on it. And uh, we don't keep any inventory. You know, they, they you sell it. And right, they, it's drop shit. Then they print it, you know. They, yeah. They, they make it to order or whatever, but. I'm like, well, let's get creative. You know, what else could you have, right? Well, I do. I do have at home. I have my Father's Eve coffee mug, and I do have a Father's Eve T-shirt. Um, so yeah, baseball caps. Baseball caps. Get, get Johnny Truth on Getty it. Get colors. It. I'd like to see, yeah. you know, a duffel bag or something. I mean, you know, what's the stuff you use, right? I'm, yeah, exactly. Cool guy. Give me a. Give me a toolbox or a tool belt or something, you know, give me something that, you know, I don't know. It, it's like anything, right? you got ideas, yeah. but making it happen is the hard part. So it's fine. We'll get there. It's all good. So I want to pick back what you just said about ideas. Yeah. And earlier you started off, you know, talking about it was a bunch of guys sharing ideas. What have, what have been some of those ideas that uh, these other dads have shared with you, be it, be it business, be it parenting, be it whatever, oh, what, what, anything that stands out to yeah. you. Yeah, I'll tell you. I, I, I'll give you a couple and I'll, give you, I'll tell you a story. I'll, I'll start with a story. So early on, like it must have been 2017, I'm thinking. So there weren't a lot of groups, a lot of guys. You know, we didn't know anything. We're just doing it. I got a call like the next day. Maybe it was the Monday after because I check in with guys like, hey, how'd it go? And did you take any pictures? You know, we're trying to put some pictures on the social media, whatever. Right. So I talked to the guy. I think, it, I think it was the guys in North Carolina and I could be wrong, but it was somewhere that part of the country, North or South Carolina, a group down there. And I got a call from a guy on that Monday 
And he says, you're John Francis? Yeah, yeah. He said, I went to Father's Eve. I'm like, oh, great, man. How'd it go? He said, let me tell you. He said, I, I went to this bar. It was in some bar, restaurant somewhere. He said, I didn't know anybody. <laughs> and he said, we sat down and we talked. There were five guys and we talked for three hours. Nice. And I and first I said, you know, bullshit. You're lying to me, right? No, no. <laughs> I said, don't lie to me. You know, tease him. He's like, no, man, we really did. We sat down and we just, you know, we had a couple of beers, nothing fancy. And, and we just talked and shared ideas. And we talked about it. I said, well, what did you talk about? He said, I told things, I told them things that I don't tell other people because I don't know these guys. Part of the fun was they didn't know each other, right? Like, Mm -hmm. I'm like, huh, I never thought of that. You know, like, you know, guys you don't know, you can share because there's there's no strings attached or whatever. No, no, uh, no risk, I guess. But so he said we had some really great conversations and he said it was helpful. And I, I wanted to let you know that wouldn't have happened without Father's Eve. And so you made Father's Eve. So you made that happen. And I want to say thank you. And I, I was like, wow, man, thank you. I, I was quite touched, honestly, to think like, wow, that happened all the way over there. You know, and all I did was uh, triggering ideas. Everybody else did the work, you know. But so that's pretty cool, a real story. And then the other thing I'll, I'll tell you what I've seen at my own Father's Eve events here in Minnesota, at least back when we had them, you know, and hopefully this year. There's guys that come back year after year, and that's the only place they've ever met. Like, I see them, hey, man, how you doing? I remember you from last year. How you been? Tell me about the whatever. You know, and they catch up at Father's Eve. Like, they're friends now, but they know each other because of Father's Eve. You know, they didn't know each other when they showed up, but by the time they left, they were buddies. And then they come back next year, and and they're they're still friends. They're still familiar, and now they're better friends, and they – share more and they get together. And, you know, I mean, it's just creating that opportunity for these guys to get together in a place where they feel safe. They feel, uh, you know, they can share and tell stories if they want, or, or they don't have to, nobody's really expecting anything. And I think that's what makes it work. You know, one time uh, I had a guy, a good example of how do people share stories? I said, the guy was, um, his kid was a little younger than my kids. My kids, I think, were like eight and nine or whatever. You know, the older one was in there and the younger one was only like four or five. So they're young, like little kids. And this guy was there and he was trying to teach his kid. He said he was just started to teach his son how to ride a bike. And I said, well, look, uh, I've got girls, but, you know, I think it's pretty much the same. You know, here's how I did it with my daughter, you know, and I kind of explained we got the bike and we practice around the training wheels. You know, we did the, I kind of just gave him the story of here's what I did, right? What worked and kind of what didn't work. And he looked at me, he's like, man, that's just what I needed. Now I, I kind of have a sense. I said, well, go ask somebody else, you know, Hey, how did you teach your kid to ride a bike? You know, or other people have said things like, you know, what do you do when your kid uh, gets their first job? You know, how do you handle that? Or, or, you know, anything in life, what, what do you do when you're, your kid uh, gets in trouble, you know, I mean, other things, you know, it doesn't, not always good thing. What happens when your kid graduates? What, what do you, what do you tell your kid when they're going to college? You know, what, whatever, what, what have you done? What's worked for you? What have you not done? What's not worked for you? What are you willing to share that somebody else could listen and learn and, and have just a better little tiny bit of improvement. You know, it's that incremental improvement. If I think guys come away from Father's Eve knowing just a little better appreciation for how important being a father really is. They come away thinking, you know, if I try just a little harder, if I just do this little thing one more, a different way or a better way, or they try to pay attention or they try to be patient or they try to do something with their kids or they try to take care of something a different way. You know, they, they try to be a better dad, whatever that means or however they, they decide, uh, you know, it's, it's for each to their own. But if father's Eve creates that opportunity where that awareness occurs and that intention is created and then they go home and they're a better dad at, at some tiny degree, that to me is a huge success because I don't see that happening anywhere else. Right. I don't see fatherhood and dads being celebrated and supported and 
encouraged and reminded of just how important they are. Uh, I think dads are taken for granted. And, you know, I think there's a lot of opportunities where fathers and fatherhood could be more important and better examples and, and uh, can help solve a lot of big problems out there. You know, I, I'm not uh, uh, naive, I, I don't think, but, uh, you know, anyway, I, I've got this thing and it's it's got some traction and, and we're trying to make the most of it and, and still keep it fun. You know, it's uh, to me, it's all about having a good time and, and keeping it simple. It's Father's Eve. There's not much to it. That's what makes it work. Well, two things come into mind uh, listening to your stories, John, and that is I was in Toronto a couple years ago, and it was right around the time I had some eye surgery, so I really couldn't drive. And every morning I would take a, a I can't remember, Uber, Lyft uh, from the hotel to the office and then back. And one morning, the young man that picked me up, he said, Oh, I really like that hotel. And I'm like, so you've been there? He goes, yeah. He goes, I can't remember if it was once a year or like once a quarter. He and his his guy friends, and I want to say, John, they were probably in their late 20s. And what they would do is they would check into the hotel for a weekend, uh, no cell phones, and all they would do that whole weekend is just talk to each other and just have open dialogue. Mm-hmm. And I'm going, how beautiful is that? Yeah. That that young. Mm-hmm. And Smart. what kind Smart. of great dads those guys are going to be because they're going to have open conversations with their kids. And they're going to be able to say to their kids on a different level, I understand what you're saying or or. You know, it, w- it was just, again, a beautiful moment. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I got to talk about learning the, the bike. Um, when I was a kid, it was my great-grandfather uh-huh. who taught me how to ride a bike. And then when my son was at that age, he was actually his uh, bonus dad that taught him how to ride a bike. Uh-huh. So uh, part of me... I want to say more than part of me uh, was very upset about that, and sure. I, I, I mean, I believe it. and I hope you kind and of I missed hope... it like it was exactly. I wanted that opportunity. Yeah, but the the little bit left mm-hmm. is how grateful I am. Uh, this gentleman took it upon himself to teach my son uh, how to ride a bike, and and so I. I, again, I, I want to be mad, but at the same time, it's it's a learning opportunity for my son yeah. to learn from another person. Um, you see the bigger picture. I mean, uh, yeah. it's, a, it's a bigger opportunity and, and good for that dude for stepping up and doing the right thing. You know, kid needed what he needed. And, you know, there you go. Dad's taking care of kids. I mean, all the dads taking care of all the kids. You know, I think... I don't know. I get it. There's like a universal respect, I think, that's a- available to us. <laughs> you know, I think I just take it for granted. I don't even think about it. It's unconscious, but uh, maybe it needs to be a little more conscious. You know. Well, I'll tell you where I took it for granted was I thought I'd be married, uh, one and done. Mm-hmm. I thought I would have uh, that opportunity to spend as much time with my son, and um, you know. Things. That didn't happen. Yeah. Real exactly, things happen. Reality happens, and uh, next thing I know, I am no longer in that house trying to figure out, you know, how do I stay connected with my son when I'm not around? And yeah. um, I'm very blessed that uh, the relationship I have with my son. We are. Um, you were talking about graduations before we started, uh-huh. and um, just this past week we had uh, my son's high school graduation and and then uh the end of june he and i are taking a trip to uh the college where he'll be attending in the fall for a a somewhat guys trip and i'm super excited about that being able to um and it was funny because i was saying to my wife uh just recently i go it was my dad that took me on my college trip to visit the campus. So mm-hmm. 
very blessed again to have, you know, my dad in my life where I was able to uh, somewhat emulate, yeah. you know, positive fatherhood. Mm-hmm. So I am, uh, I'm grateful for the times that uh, I have with not only my son, but we'll be seeing my dad very soon. That's cool. That's cool. Yeah, I, I miss my dad a lot, you know, especially around his birthday and certain holidays and of course Father's Day. It's like, oh man, you know. So appreciate what you have when you have it. It's it's easy to yeah. say it's really hard to do, but uh, you appreciate things differently when, when you're older and when you don't have them and and now you really understand things that, uh, you know, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm grateful to be, you know, uh, getting older, uh, I think, a little more mature in some ways and certainly uh, appreciating life in, in a more deep and richer ways. It's, uh, I'm lucky and I'm grateful and I'm, I'm happy to be doing what I'm doing. It, it's fun. I'm still uh, I'm lucky to have an opportunity to do something like this, you know. And I am super grateful to, to you. John, because I, I really do feel you're on to something. Like you said, you know, 20 years from now, it will be an overnight success, but you get it. You understand it. Um, I remember one of the first times you and I talked, you know, Father's Eve is about hanging out with your guy friends, your buddies, and then Father's Day is about hanging out with your family. And it's just a beautiful connection right there and i i believe and again i i I do believe that we're on to something when it comes to fatherhood and i really do think that uh, as minutia as what you're attempting to do now there are some big opportunities within those men's somewhat groups Mm -hmm. of you know meeting for the first time at father's eve and know talking and building relationships and who knows a guy might be struggling but because of somebody he met at father's eve that was able to connect to he can reach out to that other man that other dad and say hey can we talk you know i'm struggling you're absolutely right and i i gotta tell you i uh, one of the groups we get involved with is the national at home dad network right (laughs) these guys are a riot and i I'm a work from home dad, right? So I'm, I'm at home, but I'm, I'm, some of these guys, like their wife might have a job or, or whatever they're out, you know, and they're at home doing like everything domestic, you know? And, and I mean, I get it. And so I met these guys and I get to know these guys and um, they have a conference, which is really a kind of a riot, right? It's a dad conference. It's called home dad con, right? Home dad conference. And we started going, I started going, and I'm like, this is great, you know, and, and uh, it's a smaller group, but these guys are committed and, and they really want to do better. And, and uh, they have speakers and workshops and sponsors, and it's it's really well done. And, and uh, anyway, I got to know these guys. And um, and Father's Eve, we show up, we're a sponsor. We, we actually host the reception. We call it Convention Eve, the night before a conference starts, right? Convention Eve sponsored by Father's Eve, and uh, it makes a lot of sense for us, right? It's it's fun. And anyway, what I what I'm saying is, so at Father's, so these guys are hearing about Father's Eve at at their conference, and then when we're running our program Father's Eve and and the events and the social media and the promotional stuff, we're reaching, we're talking about them and their group. And I've had guys tell me, I finally found my tribe, like I finally found. I knew these guys were out there. I just didn't know where and they didn't know where to look or they didn't, they didn't think to look. So you're right. Just creating that awareness that these groups like at home dad and city dads and, and fathering together and and the dads married to doctors. I mean, really? I'm like, yeah, they, they got the group and these guys are well organized and they help each other. And the whole idea is that we're all out there doing our thing and we can do it together. As much as you want, you, you can you can connect and share and celebrate with all these guys. And we're all dads. It's the common denominator. So being a better father is, is a, a, an easy, uh, you know, a common goal. So we, we kind of embrace that. So, yeah, it's fun to kind of cross pollinate, if you will, to introduce these people to other groups and other groups to other other people and 
and just trying to connect the dots and make something happen. It's a lot of fun. Um, so this year, June 19th, correct? Correct. It's always a Saturday night before Father's Day. And while we're talking, I, I, I'm a bad host here, John, but <laughs> I texted a, a dear friend of mine and I'm giving, I'm, I'm calling him out. Okay. My good friend, Chris Williams. Oh yeah. You know Chris, mm-hmm. and I'm looking at the events, the Father's Eve events. Colorado is not on this, he, he, so he might be in the pipeline. Uh, we're, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say this to you uh-huh. right now, John. Uh, tomorrow, I am supposed to be having a call with him and another friend. Okay. Um, and I'm gonna say, let's figure. I don't. I don't care if it's he and I. We got to get Colorado on the map. We got to be on the map. I have. A guy we got to be on the map. I John. had a guy in Denver who who uh, I was counting on, I guess, and he's a nice guy, good friend, actually, really nice guy. And he's like, you know, I just got too much going on, man. I can't do it. I'm like, look, I get it. This this should not be stressful. This should be fun. Uh, my line is, uh, you know, pick a place, make it happen. I mean, yeah, it's just that it, it, simple. There's nothing to it, you know. Um, all right. So I'm making a promise to you, John. I'm making a promise to the listeners. I love it. Um, Chris and I are going to figure out a place. We're going to put Colorado on the map. And we're going to make it from, you know, for 2021 going forward. We're going to figure this out because – I have to be a part of this. I so I can't remember what happened two years ago. <laughs> well, I COVID think. happened. That's what screwed it up for a lot of people. But that could have been it, John. Yeah, no, <laughs> we we had a lot of momentum going into last year, and then everything kind of fell apart. But you know that's life. It pushed us online, which I think is probably going to turn out to be a really good thing overall. But you know we've been uh, trying to get it back, and and uh, we'll get back. I mean, it's just a matter of time. And, uh, all right, I want to I want to just say a few. Uh, all right, so we're gonna get Colorado on the map. Uh-huh. I want I want to see where's oh my gosh my my home state of Illinois. Come on, people, Chicago. Come on, yeah. that's that's just crazy. Uh, so yeah, They'll that's going there. to be my challenge. Yeah, put them out there. We need more guys, and uh, we need more guys. Yeah, guys need to step up. There's really there's no cost. We're not taking any credit card numbers, none of that. Right, you click the button on the website. There's a little bit of fill in the blanks. Uh, it's a license agreement. It's free. Right, there's not any heavy duty uh, issues. We want you to do keep it clean. There are five rules. You can see them on the website. Uh, we're trying to capture emails and names. We're trying to build a list so we can promote ourselves. Uh, we don't spam anybody. You know, we're not stupid about our stuff. We, we're just trying to have a good time and, and spread it around with more guys. So it's easy. It's fun. It's free. It's Father's Eve. That's that's kind of the tagline. There's, there's nothing to it, man. So we have Children's Miracle Network. Mm-hmm. You have Ace Hardware. Sports clips, uh, Craig Melvin from the Today Show. Mm-hmm. Uh, what's the lady's name again? Who's also uh, speaking? Grow Tonya, up, growing up without a dad. Uh, I want to say Tonya Lee Carter. It might be Tonya Carter Lee. Um, she's from Ohio. I can get you her her info. She's great. She's just a great speaker. I think everyone's going to be very impressed with her. All right, last question before I let you go, John. Mm -hmm. You're going to have to put your thinking cap on. And the last question. Here we go. If you could step into my shoes, well, socks for tonight, (laughs) what would you have asked that I did not ask? If you could step into my socks, what would you have asked that I did not ask? Uh, what would I have asked that I did not ask? Boy, uh, well, I could think selfishly, uh, how can people help you? Right. That's, that's what I want. If you were to ask, there we go. ask me, how, there we go. how can people help me? How can go, people help go you? Go to our website, fathersEve.com. Sign up. There's a sign up here button. Give us your name and email and whatever. Follow us on the 
Facebook and Instagram and whatever, social media, right? And then just celebrate LinkedIn. Don't, you're on LinkedIn. I love that you're on LinkedIn. Yeah, c- celebrate fatherhood and share it with a hashtag. We're trying to get Father's Eve as a hashtag to trend on on Father's Eve. That would be pretty cool, uh, something to do. You know, we need we need visibility. We need momentum. Uh, we're just trying to, uh, you know, so people can join us. I guess that's what you can do. If you want to send checks and stuff, great. We're, we're we've got a shop. You can buy T-shirts and hats and stuff. You talked about. We'll get some hats on there for you. A baseball cap. I'll send you my address. Yeah, yeah, right on. <laughs> uh, but we, um, that's how people can help us is get involved and, and spread the word. You know, I, I say, uh, save the date, spread the word, tell your friends, you know, um, we're just, uh, we just want more people to know about it. John Francis founder, creator of father's Eve, get ready for a, a good launching pad for 2021. John, thanks for coming back. I am so grateful to know you and it's really too bad we we missed each other when i was in minneapolis recently no wasn't that funny you were here and i was in colorado exactly totally opposite but yeah oh well that's life yeah i appreciate it tommy thanks again uh it's always nice to connect and update with you and and i appreciate you giving me the time and just a nice easy conversation and tell the story and share ideas and uh, I appreciate what you do to help guys, especially blending the family. That is a challenge. You know, I can only imagine. Um, so I get it. And uh, I'm grateful to, to know you and uh, appreciate the collaboration. Out of 199 podcast episodes, what's been your favorite so far? 